Welcome to SVG TV News for Monday, June 20th, 2022. I am Rochelle Batiste with the details. Having to prepare for a major exam through a pandemic and a volcanic eruption last year, teachers and parents of students who came out on top in this year's Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment, CPEA, are pleased with their performance. Our news team today caught up with some of the principals of the schools which secured positions in the top 10. And they say despite the circumstances in which the students had to prepare for the exam, they were confident that the process with which the students and teachers had to go through will yield great results. They didn't let us down. They were right up there. We two percent of our students were in the top overall 14 placements. Like I said, one word, elated <laughs> for them, for their parents, and of course for all of the staff at Sugar Mill Academy that plays such a huge role in their development over the years. Sugar Mill has four, what I like to call inspirational rules for our students that we live by and we have it posted in every classroom. And be responsible, be respectful, be prepared, be safe. Being elated, duly proud, and it was something that we were expecting, anticipating. Team that prepared the students from kindergarten way up and the present team, grade five and grade six. I have all confidence that they would have done their best and the students would have performed quite well. So getting the news of Lauren's performance didn't take us by much of a surprise. So we were expecting the first. As usual, we were expecting the first, but thank God we are still to the top. It's an exciting feeling, knowing that Kayla Bob came in the top for girls and Miles Dalton for boys, he came towards for boys and eight overall. And I must congratulate our students. We got 99% passes which was great, so I'm excited, I'm happy for them. Our students are, have done well, we are always doing well, because the teachers are passionate about the teaching, they are passionate about delivering the curriculum, and so we are always on top because um, of that. Also, teachers know how to tailor this curriculum, they know what to do, they know the strengths and the weaknesses of the students, so they are always bringing them up to par on whatever they would have been teaching them. O'Neill Sprott, father of Osana Chantel Sprott, who secured third place, said that as a family, they knew Osana would have done well as they ensured she put in the necessary work. Noting that Osana's brother also secured third place in the 2018 CPA exam. The proud dad says, aside from keeping their heads in the books, children also need to engage in extracurricular activities, which also help them in these exams. Very proud um, of the whole family, close friends to the family, um, the school as well. Um, so we are all very proud of, for the result. I'm not really surprised because we know she was working hard and uh, although she, you know, is a bit shy and, and, and quiet, we know she was putting in the work and um, so we, we were very happy when we got the result. Um, make sure that the, you know, the children study hard, um, you know, follow the, the notes from the teachers as well, um, take part in, you know, extra classes and, you know, other little things, she actually does music as well, so, you know, not just the academics, but, you know, there's other things um, as well that it is the children can do to prepare themselves. Liron Robinson of the Bible Methodist School placed second for boys and tied for the sixth place overall. His mother, Farisha Robinson, said that although her son loved playing games and watching television, he is very hardworking and determined. Hence, she expected him to do well. Robinson advised other parents not to solely rely on teachers to prepare their children for exams as they also have a part to play. Happy. Um, I'm a bit surprised 
in a sense, but not really. I know he would have done well, but you know, it just surprised me that he did, he did that well. He, he likes to play games, he likes to watch his TV shows and everything, but once he is committed to doing something, he does it. I like to thank the teachers, um, the head teacher, um, and I am just, just want to say to parents, it's not the teachers alone. Parents, we have to be committed because I was behind him 100%. You know, me and other parents, we were here during the Easter break, making sure that portfolios were well organized. And sometimes we as parents, we leave our children up to the teachers, but we have to be there behind our children. I mean, sometimes academically, some parents may not think that they have what it takes, but just the support is enough for your child. And that's what I normally do for my kids because this is my second son who will be going to grammar school and I always support. Just hours after Cuba Francis completed the Caribbean primary exit examination CPEA, she was confident that she would secure the number one spot in SVG. The grade six student of the Sugar Mill Academy obtained the highest average for the 2022 exam 98.20% and she achieved a perfect score on the mathematics paper. The former student of the Georgetown Government School suffered some setbacks after she was forced to change schools uh, following the eruption of Lassafre volcano last year. Speaking to our news team earlier today, Kuba says she did numerous practice papers which improved her confidence and performance for the exam. Before I wasn't nervous, but on the day, I the first day I was nervous, but when I arrived at the school, I, I wasn't nervous anymore because all of my friends were happy and I sat in the exam, it was just like another past paper because it was really easy. Well, the first day was quite easy, the second day got it was more challenging because um, the English, I, the English had more comprehensions and I could have seen multiple answers, but I had to choose the best one. I was sure I would come first. Kuba's mother, Chantel Richard, says they are extremely proud of Kuba's accomplishments and they recognize that from a young age, she was excelling academically. That went through my head was that yes, she did it because you we were expecting it. She was 100% sure that she was a top performer. Academically, she was excelling in all areas from kindergarten right up. She would have maintained an average above 98, and she finished CPA with an average above 98, 98.2. So um, right through in all the areas, I think her for me. Her weakest error would have been um, language, especially comprehension, which is more subjective, where you might see an answer, but the but there's but that's not the answer. You see something because you're thinking a certain way. So that for me was her biggest challenge, and it was reflected in her results because um, the language was her lowest score, but nonetheless she did top. Now she got in the 90s for language. Kuba's father, Bradley Francis, who was a past island scholar, says Kuba has told him that she plans to follow in his footsteps. Kuba has known that for a long time and she has always said to me that she's going to be an island scholar one day as well. So maybe this is the first of steps she's taking to, to meet that goal. There's one thing I knew that Cuba put every effort into her preparation. She was outstanding, she was committed, she was focused. And I knew she would do well, but to get to the number one spot is, is quite, sometimes it's not all in your hands. Somebody has, has to do something wrong so that you could be the number one. But she, she was fantastic and was better than I even anticipated. We congratulate all of the students. SOG TV News will bring you more on the outstanding performers at CPEA 2022 in tomorrow evening's newscast.
In other news now, we hear that public servants across St. Vincent and the Grenadines have been reminded of the many reasons to thank God. This comes from teacher of the Emanuel High School, Brian Burke, as a public service sector reform unit in the Ministry of the Public Service kicks off their first activity to commemorate Public Service Week with a church service. The service at the New Testament Church of God in Kingston was held under the theme, uh, Thanks and Praise for Recovery. At this time last year, many of our people were in shelters. And I could testify because I was there too, helping out for four months. And during that time, there was a time of doom and gloom. The outlook was gloomy because many persons were wondering how long we would be here and what would happen after all of this is over. Many were uncertain if they would be able to get back their livelihood again. And this happened while we were struggling, while we were contending with the crippling effects of the global pandemic, COVID-19. And you know what? The volcanic eruption, the COVID-19 uh, um, virus and its effects literally buried us as a people. The volcanic eruption with the ash literally covered and buried us. But thank God this morning that we are still breathing. Delivering a prayer of protection for all public servants, Uglandina Tim thank God for his grace and mercies throughout their lives. In the name of Jesus, uh, that we, oh God, would not only seek to say thanks with our lips, uh, but, oh God, we will seek to say thanks with our lifestyle in the name of Jesus. Uh, so many times we would have done things uh, that were not pleasing unto you. We would have said things that were not pleasing unto you. And this morning, oh God, we humbly bow and we ask for your forgiveness in the name of Jesus. We have have failed you so many times. We have come short of your glory so many times. And we say we are sorry, Lord. We ask for your forgiveness, oh God. Minister responsible for the public service, Frederick Stevenson, delivered the remarks at the church service and encouraged public servants to appreciate each other. You are wearing customs uniform. Or you at Inland Revenue Department or your service commissions, or social welfare department, you feel that, or you're at the Ministry of Finance, you feel that you own your department and your ministry so that nobody should come there to inquire about anything and to ask you about anything because you feel you're entitled to this or to that. But remember, the civil service order says uh, when you get your letter of appointment, don't think here is yours. Because when you think so, you can be transferred to any other department within the government service at a short notice. So at all times, I want to encourage us as civil servants to appreciate one another. Appreciate somebody else's department and appreciate the persons who work there too. Minister Stevenson further spoke on the week of activities, noting his disappointment with the attendance at the church service and asked that more public servants take part in the other planned activities. I have an activity of this nature, and the ministries are asked to send representatives and you come to the service and see less than the minimum of persons in the public service attending. You feel disheartened and you feel that what you've been doing over the last couple of weeks to promote this activity was a waste of time. I don't know how you some people feel, but that is how I feel. There are quite a number of activities which would be held over the next couple of days as part of the Public Service Week of activities. 
And so I implore our civil servants to participate in those activities. The activities for Public Service Week are being held under the theme, Charting Our Road to Recovery, Affirming the Sustainable Development. <laughs> Local flower producer Eastern Caribbean Group of Companies, ECGC, has petitioned government for an increase in the price of flour as global wheat prices continue to soar. Ukraine, the world's largest producer of grain, is experiencing challenges with exports due to the invasion by Russia, and it has created a shortage of grain across the globe. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez says he believes ECGC's request for the price increase is justified in light of what is happening in in global markets. He says instead of the price increase, he presented to ECGC the alternative of a 50% waiver of the custom charges on the importation of grain. The request for an increase can be justified and is justifiable given the fact that the prices for wheat and, and other expenses that they've gone up by over 50 percent but we are asking them and what we what, what what i'm going to propose is not quite what they asking for to look to look at something which might be more manageable and i'm asking them to take less of a margin in the current circumstances and re in, in in return we will take off 50 percent of the custom service charge. PM Gonzalez says the waiver will translate to a saving of five dollars per hundred a dollar pounds sack of flour. As a result of this subsidy, he says government will lose around 350,000 EC dollars per shipment of grain. So if we do that, we'll be able to reduce the extent of what they're talking about by at least five dollars a bag, a hundred four bags. But they ha they we have to put them in increase. This this reduction of the cost of service charge by fifty percent will will amount to a loss of revenue of close to three hundred and fifty thousand dollars per shipment. And you have two, three more shipments this year. Rose Place fishermen are being urged to accept the compensation package being offered by government and relocate to nearby beaches. This from Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, who addressed concerns expressed by the displaced fishers on the WFM Issues at Hand program on Sunday. As preparations move ahead for the $185 million port modernization project, BM Gonzalez says the plea made by fishermen to stay at the present location cannot be accommodating, citing space and security concerns. First of all, <clears throat> where there's no space to accommodate the, the fishermen in their operation, either during the construction of the port or on the conclusion of the, the, the port development project. First, there's the broad issue of security for everybody, including the fisher folk, in having a modern port in that area and to have the fishermen alongside doing that operation. Secondly, that particular area is airmarked for the second phase precisely for the development of the modern port facilities. We explain that what we're doing first is the main container port, but also the designs have already been done on all the consultation. The contractor has to take hold of that entire area because work has to be done on the sewer line. And once that is being done, nobody can go there. First of all, <clears throat> where there's no space to accommodate the, the fishermen in their operation, either during the construction of the port or on the conclusion of the, the, the port development project. First, there's a broad issue of security for everybody, 
including the fisher folk, in having a modern port in that area and to have the fishermen alongside doing that operation. Secondly, that particular area is earmarked for the second phase precisely for the development of the modern port facilities. We explain that what we're doing first is the main container port, but also the designs have already been done on all the consultation. The contractor has to take hold of that entire area because work has to be done on the sewer line. And once that is being done, nobody can go there. PM Gonzalez urges a group of 35 fishers to split up and find space at nearby beaches. First of all, <clears throat> where there's no space to accommodate the, the fishermen in their operation, either during the construction of the port or on the conclusion of the, the, the port development project. First, there's a broad issue of security for everybody, including the fisher folk, in having a modern port in that area and to have the fishermen alongside doing that operation. Secondly, that particular area is earmarked for the second phase precisely for the development of the modern port facilities. We explain that what we're doing first is the main container port, but also the designs have already been done on all the consultation. The contractor has to take hold of that entire area because work has to be done on the sewer line. And once that is being done, nobody can go there. PM Gonzalez urges a group of 35 fishers to split up and find space at nearby beaches. And given the numbers and where they are, some can find space at Clinali, some can find at Kittels, some can find at Lomans, some can find at Kalakwa. One man, the ego find at the Prime Minister says an attractive compensation package is being offered, which includes a relocation allowance of $400, $2,400 for crew allowance, and $13,000 for vessel improvement. He urges the fishers who have not yet accepted the package to do so and not to take advantage of the government's generosity. But they're all kind of cross current. For instance, one fisherman who is from Reland Hill at the meeting ad advised his colleagues, don't tell the government that you can go anywhere. Because if you tell them you can't go anywhere, you would get as much out of them. And the RSVG police force have launched an investigation into the circumstances surrounding the shooting death of Cassian Saperton, a 33-year-old unemployed of Kingston Park, uh, dot that occurred on Saturday, June 18th. The police say investigations revealed that the deceased was sitting at a shed not far from his home when some unknown assailant or assailants shot him. Sapleton reportedly received several gunshot wounds to his body and was later pronounced dead at the scene by the district medical officer. The police say the motive surrounding the shooting death of Sapleton is unknown at the moment. A post-mortem examination is expected to be carried out on the body to ascertain the exact cause of death. Persons with information that can assist with investigation are asked to contact the police. All information they say will be dealt with confidentially. And the police have arrested and charged Bahira Dopwell, a 20-year-old unemployed of Paul's Avenue, with two counts of robbery. The police say, according to the investigation, on Friday, June 17th, at about 8.45 p.m. at Richmond Hill in Kingstown, the accused allegedly being armed with a gun robbed a 24-year-old prison officer of diamond of two gold-plated chains valued at $200. EC. In addition, he was further charged with robbing a 30-year-old bank teller of Glamorgan of a number of personal items, a total value of $970 and $40 in cash. The incident also occurred at Richmond Hill at about 8.45 p.m. on Friday. The accused is expected to appear before the Serious Offenses Court to answer the charges. 
Meanwhile, M. Roy Mitchell, a 41-year-old chauffeur of Baibu, was arrested and charged with two counts of burglary. The police say investigations reveal that the accused allegedly entered the dwelling house of a 28-year-old domestic of Gome as a trespasser and stole a quantity of food items and electronics valued at $8,524, the property of the virtual complainant. The incident occurred at Gome between 10.45 p.m. on Wednesday, June 15th and 1.20 a.m. on Thursday, June 16th. The accused was also charged with entering the dwelling house of a 30-year-old teacher of Gome as a trespasser and stole one black Samsung 40-inch television valued at $3,000 EC and two black Samsung uh, tablet valued at $4,000 EC and $200 in cash, the property of the virtual complainant. The incident occurred between 11.30 p.m. and 11.55 p.m. on Wednesday, June 15th. The accused is expected to appear before the Serious Offences Court to answer the charges. <laughs> Welcome to SVG TV News and for Thursday, June 16, 2022. I am Rochelle Batiste with the details. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez earlier today tested positive for COVID-19. A news release from his office said he will be in quarantine until Monday, June 20th, 2022. The release went on to say that as a consequence of this development, the Prime Minister will not be able to leave the state on Sunday, June 19th to attend the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, which is scheduled to be held in Rwanda. The release further noted that PM Gonzalez has no adverse health reaction and is working at home. We do wish him a speedy recovery. A government plans to revamp the COVID-19 protocols for cruise ships as the start of the season approaches. Minister of Tourism Carlos James made the announcement at a news conference on Wednesday. The changes will fall in line with revisions made recently by the Ministry of Health and Wellness, which allowed fully vaccinated visitors to enter the country, which require requiring a COVID-19 test or a pre-arrival form. James says the Ministry of Tourism has recognized that similar changes needed to be made for cruise passengers. I'm quite similarly, we're looking at doing the same thing um, for cruise passengers. Um, we have had this challenge where the bubbles worked in the way in which we intended it to work to facilitate having ships here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines during the last cruise season. Because I believe without the bubble, we would not have gotten that amount of ships coming or even any ships at all. But we have, we have to live with COVID. We are moving past that, that period of, of, of um, you know, learning to manage um, with, with, with COVID-19. Hopefully it then becomes an endemic rather than a pandemic. Minister James says the re revision of the protocols will allow for a free flow for cruise passengers who wish to tour the island. Hoping that once we, we finalize the cruise protocols, we won't um, require fully vaccinated um, passengers to um, go into bubbles, but they can dis disembark freely without having to submit any necessary information um, on their own, but through the, 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 the ship um, with Port Health and with the Port Authority, but can free flow and basically um, go out to tour St. Vincent and the Grandines and book, book a tour. And, and, and walk around freely, and which, which is essentially where we are able to spend money within the local economy and to support um, the taxi operators, uh, market vendors, the craft and arts, um, arts and craft um, um, skills um, artisans and persons who are interested in, in that. In its latest update provided on Wednesday, the Ministry of Health says four new PCR and 16 rapid antigen cases were recorded, bringing the active case count to 155. There were 20 recoveries with three hospitalizations. 
In other news, despite the weather condition, farmers, fisher folk and others turn up at the Chumaka Government School on Tuesday for a community consultation hosted by Minister of Agriculture, Soboto Caesar and North Leeward MP Carlos James. Minister Caesar told those present that as the government plans to reintroduce the Love Box initiative, they are also aware of the many challenges farmers face. Thus, they are prepared to pay more than market value for the produce needed for distribution in the boxes. The first thing that the government did was to reopen the lockbox program. We started this program because of COVID-19. We continued it because of the volcanic eruptions and we wanted to end it because COVID-19 is weighing down. But because of what is happening in Russia, and Ukraine, we have to reopen the lockbox initiative. We are going to put more money into the lockbox initiative than we planned to put. We started off with a million dollars, we are going to increase that. It means that once you have goods to sell, we are going to try to buy as much of that as possible. And then we are going to organize to export the rest. If you look at the prices that we are buying at, we are not buying at ordinary prices. We are buying at prices because we know that when the farmers go to the shop, the prices are different, so we are paying the farmers a bit more. This is the model that the government is using to ensure that our farmers and our fishers, that they can survive the increase in prices that we are facing. He said that the ministry also has plans in place to conduct a mass seed distribution in the North Leeward area and although they will not be able to supply each person with seeds, he encouraged farmers to get their lots ready. I want to start at home because if you can't dance a yard, you can't dance a <laughs> And uh, I want proposals no matter how small the space that you live in, you must have a place behind your house. We are going to come back here in about two weeks' time to have a mass distribution of seeds. And I want for North Leeward to get its fair share. The last time I had a meeting, you could clap for that. The fair share. The last time I was down here at the meeting, we discussed a very important point. And it was, how can the people of North Leeward, the producers in North Leeward, gain more from the agriculture and fisheries sectors? The Agriculture Minister also announced plans to increase food production at the farm operated at the Bilal Correctional Facility. Minister Caesar says over the last three years, government has worked along with the prisoners and staff at the facility to establish the farm. He says there are several acres of land available at Bilal and over the next two months, efforts will be ramped up so the farm can produce food for prisoners and the country. So over the next two or three months, we are going to see the unfolding of a, a very important and interesting program whereby we are going to maximize the, the usage of the factors of production that we have here because we want to ensure that not only is the prison producing food for themselves to consume, but that they can produce also for the, for the marketplace. Minister Caesar says inflation has resulted in high food prices in SVG, and this has underscored the need to increase food production at all farms across the island. We are going to increase our efforts and the, the cooperation that we have established over the last few years, because it is very important that all farms in St. Vincent and the Grenadines that we increase production and productivity. And we are having this discussion at a time when food security is of first importance, particularly because we are seeing the significant inflation in the cost of food globally. And it is going to impact on St. Vincent and the Grenadines. 
Member of Parliament for North Windward, Montgomery Daniel, and Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, Subota Caesar, today conducted a site visit uh, for the new Arut facility at Arunchal. According to Minister Daniel, the Arut industry was sold out some 21 years ago, which left many farmers hanging. He said that when the Unity Labour Party got into power shortly after, he knew that he had to step in and assist the farmers in the area. So on the 29th of March, 2001, there was not a place at home for the Arrowhead farmers in this country. So that immediately I had to get going to get an office and the pulverizing plant established. So that when the products were being developed at Oya, where the factory is, the processing factory, we had to get the starch to come here and to be pulverized so that it can be made for sale. The exports product became a problem and so we had to sort new measures, new means to which we have decided to establish a new factory and there is where we are today as the minister mentioned where the end product has to be done with the intention of ASAP compliance all the way and so with reintroducing that, that kind of system and to ensure that we have a final product that is one that is HACCP compliant, that we can guarantee that, that the, export, the export product is one that is of high value high quality. Minister of Agriculture Subota Caesar said that the government of India has donated a healthy sum of money towards the construction of the new Arut facility at Orange Hill. However, constructions has, construction work has been held up due to the devastating impact of the explosive volcanic eruptions in April 2021. We're here because we are making our first stop as a site visit at the new site where we are going to construct the Arrowwood factory. As we are aware, the Arrowwood factory in, in Oya was significantly damaged because of the eruptions of La Soufre. And in order to, to continue production of Arrowwood in the country, we have decided to construct a, a facility here in Orange Hill and uh, we will do the processing, the processing here. We have received significant contributions from the, the government and people of India, and I, I wish to, to thank them for the assistance. The project has been delayed significantly because it was already started when we, we had the explosive eruptions. Therefore, the project is currently on hold and I am advised by the technicians that within the next two months we are going to see a restart of the project. Government MPs also pointed out that there are plans in place to have a museum at the site to showcase the likes of traditional factory. Building at the top, we wanted to make sure that we establish a museum to have all of those traditional things that were involved in the production of our root starch to be housed here so that as we move forward with our new factory you can still see remnants and what can be replicated for a traditional factory here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So all this compound was identified for the development of the our root industry to ensure that there is a history and the continued production of the crop. 40 RTs have, been, have made it past the preliminary rung and into the semi-finals of the Raga Sokamana competition this year. The Carnival Development Corporation announced the semi-finalists today. 20 persons are included in the Raga Soka category and 20 in the Power Soka category. Representatives of the CDC this week say this year there's been an overwhelming response for entries in both competitions. They have noted an increase in 
increasing the number of young artists, particularly in the power soccer category. The semi-finals will be held on Sunday, June 26, at the Solidarity Car Park Inc. The Royal Rumble Finals Night will take place on Saturday, July 2nd at the Victoria Park. The police here are investigating the circumstances surrounding a report of arson made by a 37-year-old stevedore of Edinburgh. The police say, according to a report on Wednesday, June 15th, some unknown person or persons without lawful excuse destroyed one blue TGS 400 flatbed truck registration plate T1323 uh, valued at 120 thousand EC dollars by setting it on fire the property of the virtual complainant the incident occurred at Bay Street Kingstown about 2 30 a.m. on Wednesday persons with information about the investigation are asked to contact the police all information they say will be dealt with confidentially